Hello guys and welcome to episode 12 of my Song of Six playthrough series. So, in the previous episode, we had set up all of our services around our city so that we could increase my population that we had. Because one thing we were struggling with was um, just, well not struggling with, but just starting to get to the point where we want being able to accept new immigrants. Um, and while food could be something, again, like I said before, how, um, where is it, access, here we go, access. And food rations the food rations are huge in determining how many more people you can accept but we were struggling to actually get in more food because bread was a bit of a problem but we've got three thousand bread so we now have enough people to accept more uh sorry and have more food to accept more people we also have our intolerant pastures here set up which are still gathering more, and more animals but i discovered last episode the first time i ever made them i discovered that they're actually much better than i thought because not only do they still give you a little bit of leather so not leather, a little bit of uh, livestock, but they produce double the amount of animals for the same amount of space. So you can quite efficiently get some tucked away and produce a lot of meat. So you should hope to see our meat amount massively increase as we get more and more of these on the entelodonts. But we should also see a lot more people who are willing to join us uh, now that we're increasing our services. So there are a lot of services to make. We've got all these wells here, Lavatories, speakers, uh, the uh, stages. I think we've got one set over here to be made. Um, yeah, this is a massive stage. We just need to get the um, the jobs done, but we need a lot of marble for these. So I didn't actually read into that before. So we need a lot of marble. Have I got some on the way? I've got 619 on the way. Okay, yeah, sorry. I did I did have some ball. Okay, so I had marble ball. We had some pottery ball to upgrade some of these buildings. So I'll put the speed back up again. We then upgrade on the services we've already got. Um, where can I see them? So, got the lavatory here. We need marble again. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of marble to um, get these buildings upgraded and built as well. But yeah, we've got we've got these initial ones here built and upgraded. This one here, can we see marble? So, we did uh, iron as well, but we've got a little bit of iron stocked up. That's also because I wanted to upgrade this one potentially. Wow, we just we just lost loads of workers. Why is that? That, that orchard has just started. Okay, so I'm going to leave that at 38. I'm just going to have to rely on the fact that we're going to get more people in. So hopefully this workforce number goes back down to zero and then, then up again as we get more workers. Hmm. I've got it on 1,000. I'm going to set it to 1,100 at the moment. Um, we'll have to hopefully see if we can get some more people in. There's one problem I'm noticing. I've had the game running for quite a bit of time now at a, a faster speed. We're up to four workforce, which is good. And we are getting loads of meat now. Look at this, 535 meat we're maintaining, which is a really, really good level of meat. Bread's coming out a little bit. It's gone from about 3,000 to about 2,600. So that's going down. Apples are going down because we're exporting them. But they are still spoiling. If we're looking here, we did have 130 spoiled, even though we're still trying to export them. So, yeah, I'm not sure what to do about apples. Um, but meat is going good. But we're still getting people who are having exposure. And I assume it's just because... We haven't had all of our halves made, but like up here we've had a half made. Um, down here, I think we've had our half made. Oh no, we haven't. Okay, that probably is actually probably is the reason. Uh, we do need more stone. That's a big problem. So let's. Oh, stone is so expensive now. Thirteen, but let's buy one thousand two hundred stone in. That should hopefully arrive soon. So we've got that stone coming in. You look how many houses we have here empty. So I do want to try and think about getting more jobs in this area because we've just got so many available houses. Um, we do have these canals I made over here, which I could get some fruit farms along put up those houses. But I think I want to wait a little bit until I do that. Just because we've already got a fruit farm here which is taking up all our population. And this one, which is very close to being completed, and that's going to take up another 40 workers. Plus all these other jobs like the lavatory workers and... Um, the, uh, well, the world's actually not workers, but yeah, the speaker over here. So we're going to need to have all the jobs we can get. And then on top of that, I did say that I want to focus on getting any extra people we have into training. That's why I want to boost my population. But the whole point of it is so we get people training to become soldiers, training to become archers, and we can start to make our army come to life. But we can't do that if I keep making more and more fruit workers and just have everybody working in fruit. And while it would be efficient, because like I said, we've got houses here, we've got our transport zone to move the apples all to the transport zone nearby i actually still think this transport center is a little bit waste of time a little bit waste of time uh, oh sorry I, <laughs> I forgot what it did okay no the transport center picks up doesn't it it picks up nearby fruit so actually i'm gonna do it again i had it in my head that it just delivers fruit from the nearby warehouses to the other warehouses but no it picks up fruit. so 
So yeah, we could build an export center here, gather all the fruit in the nearby area, sell it all here even quicker. But I want to get those soldiers training. And we do now actually have 10 workers. So once this fruit orchard is done, that will then use up a lot of them. But we should still continue to grow because we do have enough food. Like meat's going up quicker and quicker and quicker now. And we're not even at... Oh yeah, we are now just clipping 105 animals in each. But we are getting a good amount of meat coming in. Um, bread though is going down quite quick, so I am worried about bread because they import, I think, about 4,000 in at a time. But yeah, I'm going to set the bread to be maximum. I'm not sure why I didn't have it as maximum before. Okay, so we have had our package of cut stone arrive. So I'm going to go around upgrading all of our halves, all of our wells, all of this good stuff. Oh, wow, that actually goes from a well to like a nice fountain. That's cool. But yeah, I want to upgrade all these things. And then also, just while I'm here, construct some good roads so that we can make the place look a little bit nicer. So get those roads down. Yeah, most importantly, construct and upgrade all these buildings so that the people here have the best services possible. It's, it's, it's expensive, but just that little bit push it gives us to get more immigrants to come to our place means we can house and have more workers. So it does make us a big profit. In the long run, do have these places upgraded over here? Let's do other building. Yeah, this half here, this big one here. But you can see actually, it only has a 10% load, whereas this one has an 83% load. So a lot of people are going here. So I definitely want this one upgraded. But some of the others aren't actually too busy. Like for example, this laboratory, 100%. So we definitely want this one upgraded because lots of people use it. Uh, this half though, again, only 33% load. Um, this well though, 100%. So again, wells are expensive though. They, they, they cost 10 uh, machine parts. Um, or machine components, they are pretty expensive. But again, they probably are worth it in the long run. Yeah, I believe that is all of our areas that have currently been built, having been upgraded into the best service they can be. So hopefully we should see an increase in services. I can already see, yep, we're getting a push there, we're getting a push there. We are getting a push on all of our services. Um, so that number was at about 7.05, but hopefully we'll see it go higher. But now it's saying there's a negative, so I'm not sure what's going on, but we should see it increase as we get these final stages and all those buildings upgraded. There we go, this stage has been built here. We can see, I'm not sure which way around it is. I'm not sure if 240 of 240 means it's fully used up, or if 240 and 240 means it's not using anything up, I don't know. But either way, we're halfway, so we have a 50% usage or 50%, uh, well, yeah, 50% usage either way. So, that is at least getting a bit of services there. This lavatory here doing better. So we should see so yeah, 7.2, it's slowly increasing. Which one are we struggling with the most? Eateries is still something we're struggling with because access is only at 85% and proximity at 80%. So we do need more eateries. We have a lavatory built here, but we never had an eatery set to be built. We do need an eatery here. I'll get one up here. And do we have an eatery down here? I don't think we do. We have the one here. Which isn't actually even, uh, even full, so uh, I don't know if we need another one in this area. I think I will get a small one made just for proximity. Um, but I don't think we need a particularly big one. Um, this one here is obviously, I know I'd say it's obviously full, but it isn't either. But maybe one down here, because you can see these some of these houses here might just struggle to, to reach this one. So yeah, I'm going to get a couple or three more eateries made. Uh, we've also got some slavers here. Human slaves. They're so expensive. I don't understand why you'd want to buy them. 5,000 each. Why do you want to buy in human slaves or any of the slaves? They're so ridiculously expensive. Um, anyway, we'll ignore that for now and we'll go and get some more eateries just plastered around. One in uh, the top northwest here, one in the center of our uh, city or the lower center, and then one here in the lower southeast. Okay, so I've got my two eateries made. I didn't realize I actually had one here that was just about to be finished. So that eatery, well, no, actually it's finished. We've got that eatery here. So that's an auto employee. Um, so we've got the eatery there. I've made a small little one just here. And then a small little one connected to the lavatories here. So we've got them made. And I'm just gonna wait for the game to speed up because there really isn't much more we can do. We've got uh, plenty of money still. We're struggling to get new people in. We'll say that, we are, we've gone from 925 people to 935, but we're still maintaining zero people just because we're opening new jobs. Um, so, what I'm not sure about what, what I do is, when I get 
massive increase of people by just upping food rations and then praying to the Lord that I can buy in enough food. We definitely can't buy enough food at the, at the current rate. And what my thought is, on the world map, we should be able to see our trade. Um, goods. Let me just figure out how to do it. I can't remember exactly how I did it, but there was a way that you could find the, the caravans. Here we go. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious, actually. It's up, up here and it's called inbound. So we can see we've got 768 bread here from, I don't even know. We've then got 1,500 bread here, 832 bread here. And they're all coming from different locations because we're buying based on cost. So I assume it do, how it does it is when you buy all the food in, it ups the price. And once you buy in too much food from one producer, their price goes up. So as I'm buying in more and more, it's then going to different producers because they're now actually selling at cheaper prices. At cheaper prices. Um, well, sorry, as, as a producer increases their price, suddenly another one is actually cheaper than that one. So that's how the bread is being bought in. My thought is, are we only buying in? We're buying in 3,100 bread, yes. But why are we only buying 3,100? Is that because... Um, storeroom? Yeah, it's got to be the storeroom. I'm looking there. The import depot is... Oh, this is where it, I'm not sure. Do you buy in that would fill in the import depot? Would you buy into for your warehouses? And looking at the warehouses, we've got 4,600 space, but we're only bu buying in 3,100 um, to fill it. So yeah, I think the import depot is fine. <laughs> I don't know, that was very long-winded, guys. Basically, what I'm trying to say is we need more warehouse space because we're buying in all this bread but it keeps buying in 3,100 at a time. Which, yeah, if it was arriving instantly, that'd be perfect. We'd maintained 4,000 bread. But the problem is, we are then eating very, very quickly. So if we keep buying 3,100 and it takes, let's say, a week to arrive in game, by the time it arrives, we've already run out and we're starting to starve. So tell the game that we need more bread, basically, so that it buys in more at once. We need to increase our warehouse space. So do I have any free warehouses? I don't think so. Um, I'm going to store some more bread here then. The reasoning is because this is going to serve the eatery here anyway. And it's not too far away from our import, import depot. Um, this import depot here, I'm going to not sell it to have fabric or furniture or paper or as much wood. And I'm going to put all the rest into bread. So now our bread is saying... And up here, 8,160. So technically, we should always be buying in to match 8,000. So while we currently have 1,500 in the warehouse, we should be then buying in 6,500. So if I speed the game up, is that then going to buy in more once our delivery has finished here? Yeah, so I'm just a big idiot. I don't know why I didn't read this sooner. I think I think I did and just forgot. I'm not sure. But we can see here, I put it back down to 100%. And what this is saying is it will try and maintain 8,160. So, yeah, if we want to increase the amount of bread we're buying in, we don't need to build a bigger import depot. We just need to um, increase the amount of stock. So then it buys in more. All the import depot is saying is, let's say we have an order of 50,000 bread coming in. Our import depot, we can, we can only store 4,000 bread, but then the bread is going to be sitting around, not being able to import it. But at the rate we're eating it, it's not all going to come in 4,000. We've actually got two depots, so yeah, 4,100 I think we have in space for the import depot. So we've got plenty of space there. We just need to increase our our warehouse space. So that is absolutely fine. So we should now, yeah, now inbound 4,000, and it's saying that it should import 6,200 items. So that should help us with our bread situation. I'm not going to increase our food rations just yet. The reasoning is because we don't actually have enough bread to manage it. But uh, we have enough meat, actually. We're up to now 850 meat. And remember, we've, we've been increasing our population only by like 20 people, but it's going up while we're increasing our population. So I'm not going to increase the food ration days. Um, if I did, let's just say how, see how many days it's that we have. We're going to access food rations. It's not changing it just yet. Okay, I, I'm not going to mess around with it because I don't want to want to risk that but basically yeah we, we are getting a lot more meat in we can always make more, get more of these entolodont um so yeah I, I'm I'm happy with that okay so one thing I do want more one service that is quite important is the physicians because the physicians not only provide a service that I assume boosts the amount of people who want to live in your city if you look down here 
healthcare. But physicians obviously also ki uh, cure illnesses. So while we aren't having any deaths from illnesses, we can look here. Watch all my memory because I was looking at this guy. I was like, why the hell is he lying on the floor? He's just literally lying on the floor relaxing. But <laughs> he's also currently ill with the white shimmer. It's one of the diseases that we have um, in our settlements. The white shimmer here. The plagues. <laughs> yeah, not, not a good one to have. Um, so we've got that. And I want to sort it out. I only got the one position which I built ages and ages ago when we were sort of struggling to even buy in the metal for it. But now we've got loads of money. So let's get maybe two more positions. But to service our massive housing down here and service hmm, that one's here. So if I build it a nice big central one to service all of these houses that would be around our military area, and then these ones could probably just reach it, we should get a good amount of position coverage. So physicians are in civics and health and there's also then going to be hospitals later on remember we, we've got research points which I haven't invested into anything we also have a whole technology lab that i haven't even started yet so we do have more stuff to do um another thing we have is fishing which i haven't done at all because the humans are just bang average at fishing whereas the humans are really good at food uh food farms so i just want to think about but yeah, i'm going to stick with just the farms and saying that i think i also want to get more auroch pastures as well the reasoning is because i found out the other week uh, not when i was recording but just uh, as i was looking at things we actually make most of our money from leather um so yes that's quite obvious because we don't use leather we export all of it but fruit well we did make thirty-two thousand there we obviously have to wait for the, the seasons to pass to, to harvest all the fruit and sell it whereas leather we just are constantly making every month 30k 30k 40k 30k 40k you can see just constant, huge amount of money coming in. It doesn't take up many jobs, it only takes up 17, whereas these fruit farms take up 30 jobs. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe we get some more of the uh, Oroch Pastures. We also have so many Sid Points invested in them. In fact, I'm going to get another one. <laughs> Come on, let's get another one. Not, sorry, not Sid Points, uh, technology points. But yeah, we've got uh, some more invested there. Yeah, I think we're going to get some more set up. Again, not right now. Even though, wow, look at that. We have actually gone up to 20 workforce now. Uh, but we, we need our jobs sorted out here. I'm going to get more Auroch Pastures. So when we need meat and Tolodonts, if I just want money, I'll get the Auroch Pastures. Yeah, enough about all of that. Let's actually get some physicians out. Because that was what I was trying to talk about in the first place. So physicians, I'm thinking I could get one down there. But I feel... Oh... Yeah, there's enough space over there. Let's just get one down here then. We'll get nothing too crazy. Um, maybe one that big. See how many th uh, things we can fit in here. Okay, so I've finished the position here. This looks incredibly messy. Um, I've just about managed to get it to 100% quality. And it serves a lot of people. Which, yeah, I think it's a good thing because... Um, sorry, obviously it's a good thing. But I mean, for this area, I mean, is it a little bit too much to serve... 384 people probably isn't having people living here at all but i'm thinking it means that when these houses eventually do fill out we're always going to have services here available and if i get, get more farms built here and more uh, or partial set up over here we'll, we'll always have a bit of room so i think that's uh that's definitely worth it we'll get that it's 102 uh hammers though or tools which is uh expensive 75 marble we already have and the furniture furniture yeah we, we are getting up we do make our own furniture i believe our little carpenters are working away here. They're working away since the very start of the game. Um, uh, even though it's not very profitable to make the furniture, I don't believe. Um, yeah, it costs 56 to buy in, and we only sell for 45. But, so right, I don't think it's profitable to export. I can't remember. Either way, we make our own furniture, and it's probably for the best. But let me just actually make sure it is efficient use of our time, because we can get these 14 workers doing something else and just buy in the furniture. Okay, so I've done my cheeky little math for my calculator. This is terrible. Uh, basically, wood costs us 13, 15 to buy in. So, wow, I've done my math from 13. But basically, the math is quite simple. I'll explain it to you. Um, look at the recipe. Three wood makes 0 0.75 furniture. So, four wood makes one furniture. One furniture costs um, 56 to buy in and 45 to sell. But if we do. 4 times 15, which is how much the wood costs. Technically costs us 60 wood to make if we import the wood. But if we look at the selling price of the wood, the wood's worth 10. So 4 times 10 
we, we it cost us 40 basically so we do s save 12 coins technically we save 12 coins but that's for 14 workers i don't know I, basically i don't think it's it, it's it's worth it i think it'd be better if we have these workers off this and into jobs like the fruit orchards where we are actually then making huge profits or on our aura farms that is basically my, my uh my thoughts on it so what i can do shut that building down and make all these workers redundant and they can move off into better paying jobs but on that note guys i am going to end episode 12 there we have almost just hit a thousand people uh, again a lot of these are uh, children so they're not in the workforce which is why it's only 950 here but we're literally just about to hit a thousand people we have started to open and upgrade all of our services across the city um harvest has just come in we've got another fruit orchard open and we're just about to set up our final fruit orchard fruit orchard up there we are not any closer to setting up a major army but we have got the facilities in place ready to start training those people up so guys thanks a bunch for watching if you've enjoyed leave a like if you are loving the song of six content overall and you're on episode 12 now and you're not subscribed please do apart from that i will see you in the next one all right guys